Hi, this is Andrew Klein. Today's video will take a look at modeling a human head using the edge extrusion method and image planes. This video will be in several parts, which will continue along. Uh, this video is a follow-up to other videos you can find online on my website, andrewkline.net. Uh, there are videos on kleinmakelearngood.com, my teaching site. You can see many tutorials on that web page as well. Or you can visit my uh, YouTube page, which is uh, youtube.com slash slurp the um, Now we're going to start off today in a video which is in time lapse. Uh, we have image planes already inserted, so if you need help with that, this video does not cover that section. However, I will begin the process with my front image plane and the create polygon tool, essentially drawing out a um, trace around the eye, which is where I prefer to begin. Uh, once I have it drawn out in the front view, I'm going to switch to the side view, uh, go to the vertex component mode, and I'm going to edit these vertices one at a time, moving them back so that they become even in space in the side view as they are in the front view. Uh, now again, this is in time lapse, so the speed of this is about 50% faster than my actual work rate, and that's just to make sure this video is watchable in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, I'm editing each of these vertices one at a time, and you'll notice with the Create Polygon tool, uh, which can be found under um, Mesh, Create Polygon tool, I was able to create a single face. By going to Edit Mesh and choosing Extrude, once I had selected those edges, I was able to extrude out the next row of faces around the eye. Uh, I'm trying to create a loop here to reference the orbicularis oculi muscle, which wraps around the skull on the front of the face. Now, this method I find very usable for creating likenesses, uh, since I can position and make one face at a time. Uh, I will continue working my way around the eye, and I'm, I'm not really going to add anything new here until I get all of these vertices in place. So again, moving one at a time, looking in my front view, my side view, and my perspective view, making sure I have a shape that, to me, makes some basic sense. Now I add an insert edge loop under Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop, just to get one more little definition point here so I can pull down along the center of the eye. I soften my normals, and I, I continuously soften my normals, which is under um, the Polygon menu set, Normals Soften, to make sure I can see my contrast correctly. Now what I'd like to do here, I've gone back to Mesh Create Polygon tool, and I am going to continue drawing a loop around the mouth. And here I'm trying to create the edge of the orbicularis um, orator muscle, which uh, will allow me to uh, create the sort of edge loop around the mouth. This um, this muscle group here, I will continue to push back one vertex at a time. And as I do this, I'm really going to not try and add any new geometry at all yet. The same thing as with the eye, until I get the loop in place. And you might have noticed when I did this, I was able to snap my vertices to the center line in the front orthographic view by holding down X when I got really close to those points. And that made sure that I can build this symmetrically, which is what I'll be continuing on with in just a minute. So I'm moving my vertices, looking at both of my views to try and correspond the vertex points. Now, once I have this, uh, I'm going to get the split polygon tool. Uh, which is under Edit Mesh, Split Polygon Tool. I did not have quadrilateral faces or quads here before, and that's going to be one of my goals in making this model to make sure that all of my faces are quads. Uh, so I use the Split Polygon Tool to cut that up. I'll do a quick save here just to make sure I don't lose anything. And once I freeze and reset my transformations, uh, I can combine these elements and do a Duplicate Special, which is under Edit, Duplicate Special. Uh, I set my Duplicate Special settings to instance, and I set the scale to negative 1 along the x-axis, and that allows me to create a perfectly symmetrical half to this. Uh, 
Now a couple more insert edge loops here to match, and you'll notice something pretty peculiar happening. My face is invert when I try and use the append polygon tool, and that's because my normals are inside out. So I'm going to select this section and go to normals and reverse, and that way when I append, I can append a junction cleanly and my faces don't flip. Now I'm going to continue linking my eyes with my mouth section, uh, and then even maybe extrude from the eyes towards the center line. Again, using X, holding down X, to get my perfect snap to grid. And here you see I'm snapping to grid using the X toggle hotkey. You can also use a little magnet at the top of Maya to allow you to snap to grid as well. Uh, just make sure you have the magnet with the grid icon. So moving these vertices around again one at a time, and I soften the normals just to get a little bit more complete look at this. Uh, again, unifying the uh, area of muscles around the eye with the area of muscles around the mouth. Now, in this process, I, I refer to it as the edge extrusion method because I will, um, I will extrude out one edge at a time, as opposed to perhaps a box modeling method where you start with a cube and have to round the form in from the cube. Uh, I find this method to be a little bit more time-consuming, but it can be a little bit better for creating direct likenesses because you have more control over every uh, point that you put in as you make it, as you see I'm doing here now. And as I extrude on an edge, I can move it and rotate it into place, and make sure all my vertices are locked down. I treat it a little bit like creating a silhouette or contour line drawing as well, uh, focusing on the major contours and cross contours first. So here I'm kind of creating these bands up over the top of the head. And again, I soften my normals. Continuing around the process here, might do some more tweaks on the front of the face. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, there'll be a lot of back and forth tweaks where uh, I will switch back and forth to certain areas as I find I need to. Uh, that's kind of my process for modeling. I create major forms and then continue back in with uh, whatever I need if I see something that needs to be changed. So here, just kind of trying to continue my silhouette, uh, I'm working out along the uh, bottom of the neck and uh, chin down into the throat. Again, creating one little strip at a time and extruding. And since I have my symmetry turned on with duplicate special, uh, I'm able to see it on both sides. And if you accidentally move your vertices off the center line, don't sweat it. Again, just hold down X, grab your move tool, and do a quick snap to grid. So just a few minutes in here, and we've already got like a major silhouette, which you can use to see the proportions of the form. Uh, I'm now going to continue tracing back in the horizontal direction, in addition to the vertical, to go along the edge of the cheeks defining the cheekbones all the way back to the jaw and I'll stop right before the ear since uh, I will consider that a good uh, demarcation line between the front and back of the head. I'm just got to round these out. Don't forget to check in your perspective view as you do this. Uh, I think one of the biggest flaws you could do in modeling this is to not really look at all of your views and uh, I use that to help correspond what's going on. I'm also trying to make sure that the number of edges that I extrude corresponds to other sections. So here I've extruded down twice to match essentially the number of extrusions that fit along the mouth so that I can append easily through that later. I use the append polygon tool, which is again under edit mesh append polygon tool, uh, to make quick work of these junctions. Instead of having to extrude three times, I can use the append polygon tool to append straight across, and then use the insert edge loop tool to split across that. Now again, you can see all the major silhouettes that I've put in here, and uh, this really allows me to move very, very quickly along the form. Um, and look at the major shapes first. I continue this exact same idea by bringing my edges right up into the lips, do an extrude up and cut across, and now I'm going to define the lower lip and wrap this around into the upper lip as well. And once I have this from the front, I will edit this so that it works from the side view as well.